HIV AIDS. HIV is human immunodeficiency virus. And AIDS is a disease or a condition which is called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Syndrome word is used whenever multiple things are affected. Disease word is used when only one part is affected. Like jaundice is a disease, cholera is a disease, pneumonia is a disease. But this is a syndrome because whenever this happens, there are multiple systems of our body, multiple organs of our body, they get affected. Let us first talk about this HIV. HIV, this virus is a retrovirus. Retrovirus means it is RNA virus. It has SSRNA, single stranded RNA. So if this is the virus, it has two layers of gaps in. This is the single stranded RNA. It has two single stranded RNAs. Associated with every RNA, there is reverse transcriptase. And there is one more layer of glycoprotein outside this. So there is one more capsid and on this capsid are present these glycoproteins. These glycoproteins, they are called GP120. GP120. This is the glycoprotein and this is antigenic. That means it acts as an antigen. Now a question might arise that if it is acting as an antigen, then why our body does it make antibodies and destroys this virus? The reason is these GP120s, they are masked. They are covered by a non-antigenic sheath. So there is a sheath which covers them. And that is why this antigen is not exposed. If it is not exposed, our body will not detect it. These HIV virus, these viruses, they enter into macrophages. They first enter into macrophages. They multiply here and multiply. And then these macrophages rupture, releasing thousands of viruses. And that is why macrophages are known as the factories. So macrophage phages rupture, releasing many viruses. And now these viruses enter into helper T cells. HIV enters helper T cell. The T cells which are there, they are of three types. One of those are helper cells. One are killer cells. One are suppressor cells. So helper cells as the name tells us, they will help the B cells to produce antibodies. So if this is our helper cell, say for example, this is the helper cell. Helper cell also has some proteins. And these proteins are known as CD4. Helper cells have these proteins on their membrane. When the virus comes in contact with the helper cell, its mask is removed and these proteins GP120 and CD4 they become like a passage and through this passage the genetic material that is the RNA is injected into the host cell that is into helper cell and this RNA is not coming alone the RNA is bringing its enzyme also and now what will happen in the helper cell this RNA, this is the viral RNA, RNA, viral RNA, it will make DNA and this DNA can either remain attached to the DNA of helper cell and do nothing or 
This DNA can undergo transcription to form RNA and protein and replicate inside. If it replicates inside the helper cell, a stage will come when the helper cell will rupture. If helper cells rupture, there is no helper cell to help the B cell. So helper cell is going to help the B cell to make antibodies. If there is no helper cell, B cells cannot make antibodies. If they cannot make antibodies, you don't have immune system. And that is why it is called acquired immunodeficiency. There is deficiency of your immune system. We can detect AIDS by ELISA, Enzyme Linked Immunosorbent Assay. We will talk about this uh, technique in biotech. We have studied biotech earlier also, so I'm sure you have gone through ELISA. So ELISA is used to detect HIV AIDS. So if this DNA gets attached to the host DNA and remains like this. Then the cycle will be called lytic, uh, sorry, lysogenic cycle. Lysogenic. What happens in lysogenic cycle? The viral DNA attaches with the host DNA and stays like that. Multiplies with the helper cell. Or it may enter into lytic cycle. As long as it is into lysogenic cycle, that means it is multiplying with the cell, with the cell's DNA, you say that the person is HIV positive. And when it enters the lytic cycle, that means helper cells are ruptured, rupturing of helper T cells, then you say that the person now has AIDS. Because when the helper cells have ruptured, that means your immune system is compromised. It is not there. It is deficient. And if immune system is not there, then any common pathogen attacks the body. These diseases are called opportunistic diseases. They find that this body is weak. They find an opportunity to enter into the body and attack. Otherwise, in a healthy body, we can fight with those diseases on our own. Many times we don't even need medicines for that. So these are opportunistic diseases. And there are cancers also. Like in early uh, stage, when the person is HIV, few helper cells are rupturing once here and there. This will result into a very frequent infections. Cough and cold very frequently, indigestion very frequently, which is very common and we keep ignoring it, thinking that we ate something or we did not get a good night's sleep, that's why this is in, this, there is indigestion. But those can be the early symptoms, loss of appetite, loss of weight. This is because your helper cells are uh, getting damaged slowly and your immune system has become weaker. So there are infections, very common infections. But if a person gets this to this last stage, that is AIDS, then the diseases are also going to be severe. The person may even get cancer. That cancer is known as Kaposi's sarcoma. Kaposi's Sarcoma. This is a very common type of cancer. Sarcoma. A common type of cancer which is seen in patients who have AIDS. Not in people who are HIV positive. Other things which they get is pneumonia. Very common. So when the condition becomes severe, when the helper cells are gone, then the person may die because of infections other than this virus. What has the virus done? Virus has not released any toxin. Virus has destroyed the helper cells. And because of the helper cells uh, being destroyed, 
B cells cannot produce uh, antibody. And other infections enter into our body and they are responsible for death of the person. Not this virus. It has created those conditions. The treatment of HIV AIDS is still not there. We don't have the foolproof treatment of HIV AIDS. There are many companies who are claiming that they're almost close to finding the treatment for HIV AIDS. They are claiming that they have been successful in treating some patients of AIDS, but it is still not 100% confirmed. We have medicines by which the effect, the speed of viral multiplication, all those things can be reduced a little bit. And one such treatment, one such uh, drug which is given is known as AZT. AZT. This is used for treatment. Azidothymide. Azidothymide. That is AZT. It reduces the rate at which the virus multiplies. Interferons can also be used. Interferons are those proteins which are released by the viral infected cells and they make the other cells less prone to viral infection. So even interferon therapies are given. So this is to slow down the multiplication of virus. But we still have not reached to that stage where we can say that yes, we have a medicine by which we can kill the virus. And that is why HIV AIDS is still considered as fatal. It spreads through blood transfusion and it is STD, sexually transmitted disease. It also spreads by using contaminated needles, especially people who take drugs. So, you know, they use the same needle to inject that little quantity of drug. And it is the same needle which is being used by so many people. That is one possible, you know, means of spread of HIV AIDS.